right, it's time for the big dog. Let's get this girl in front of the shop. I gotta get the right rollers in this thing. I'll show you how that works. Right meters. We'll calibrate it, we'll get it set up. Then we're gonna put some 1152 in there. That's a fertilizer. It's a phosphorus and urea fertilizer mix. Put that in there as well. And then we should head to the field. I think everything's about ready to go on this machine. Unless there's something we don't know about yet that we're gonna find out soon, but let's go to the shop. I just sat down in the office, busted out my operator's manual. And I'm just going through which meters we need for Camelina. And for you guys that don't know, Camelina is an oilseed crop. Like I said earlier, it's similar to flax and canola. Um, it's going to be turned into biofuel, biodiesel. So they've, uh, we've just got a few acres we're putting in, maybe like 150 some or so. So it's not a very big plot going in. But we're just going to try it out. They got a good program for starting guys out. So we'll see what happens with it. But I got to make sure I got the right roller in. We're only going to be putting in about six pounds an acre of, of Camelina, plus about 35 pounds an acre of 1152 fertilizer. So with that all said, I've got my meters here, and I'm going to go off the canola because I think that's the closest. It's uh, rated at 2.5 to 8.1 pounds per acre. So if that is correct, I can almost use the alfalfa one too, actually. So it says I need to use the white housing, um, which is right there, and I need to use the black flute meter. Makes sense. Let's go see if we can find them. Here we go, money. There's our white housings. And we're looking for black meter rollers. And I think they're in here. Yep, they're inside these right here. So I just gotta swap these out with the correct housing and the correct meters. We should be good to go for Camelina. First thing we gotta do is we gotta take out the old cartridges. Old as in just, oh. There's the black roar that we needed. Okay. Huh. I found it. <laughs> All right, well, take that one back. Well, what I was saying, take the white housing, or, and then, of course, the black six flute meter, and put it in place where we just took out the red or orange one and replace all these with white. Make sense? Simple. Just a couple tabs, pop it in, pop it out, then we'll put some seed in it. Okay. Last orange housing with extended wear black meter. That's for fertilizer and eventually for yellow peas. I think we're ready to calibrate this thing. Let's get her fired up. Now it's been a little while since I've used the conveyor with the wireless remote here. So I'm uh, relearning the rhythm. It's not hard, it's just relearning how it goes. So yes, it's hard the first time, I'll admit it. Once you get it figured out, then it's super easy and it's just second nature, but right now we gotta learn. So let's take this thing out. Currently have the gates closed. Get the conveyor running. We'll open up the bottom of that that bag there and get her dumped in. See if we get it all in without it coming out somewhere. we go we do have a little bit of a like a 50 pound bag still I'll save that for later we'll see how far this goes we won't open that one up yet until we know like I said we're only doing about 153 acres so this bag will get almost all that done all right now for some 1152 so let's raise this bad boy up close this hopper latch it make sure it's airtight open up the fertilizer
So we're gonna run a calibration on the Camelina. Got the scales on right now, that's for the center tank, tank two. It says 80, 878 pounds of Camelinas in there right now. It's all set up, the bag's in the bottom. And then I got the monitor ready for calibration, so it's on tank two. Press the calibration button. Now the Camelina's running out inside the bag. I'll run it, yeah, for 10, 20 seconds, maybe even more, 30, 40. There's not a lot of product coming out because this Camelina is so tiny. So we want to make sure we get enough to get some weight because this is such light material. Then after I'm done, we'll weigh how much comes out, input the weight into the monitor, and then the calibrations will take place between how many rotations the meters have to do to dispense the proper amount of pounds per acre of seed or product, whatever you're doing. We do this for fertilizer too. Eight point two pounds. Okay. I'm just gonna dump this in this bucket for right now. One point nine. All right, six pounds, six point three pounds. So let's go up in here. It took four hundred eighty-one revolutions to get that. Whew. Put the pounds in. Six point three three. Enter. Next and finish we'll do it again one more time because i want to make sure next next all right let's try it again well we uh we changed plans we uh got to the field and there was a lot of button kochia that's baby kochia plants growing normally we can seed without pre-spraying because they're not coming up yet. But since they're up, since it's such a late season, we have to get some spray down and get those knocked down before we can't bleed down. And then since that up, that means the whole farm is up, which means we gotta spray everything ahead. So we're down a sprayer because big root's not ready because the weed system's not fully built out yet. That's why we got the Apache, thankfully. So the Apache is gonna be my best friend for the next couple weeks or leg arms or whoever. Maybe Dad, we'll get them all figured out. So let's get this out of here, get back in the shop, and uh, get some spraying going. All right, let's fire her up. Okay. Oh, wow. That was nice. No complaints there. Feels good to be back in the seat again. Though, I kind of wish it was big root seat, but this'll do. Well, we got her going. Took a little bit just to get this thing unwinterized, but it's running. Uh, I'm doing uh, five gallon work. Just putting uh, glyph glyphosate down, pretty heavy dose of it. Well, hopefully that'll be enough to nail those little teeny, teeny, teeny kochia. Running about 14 miles an hour and uh, about 35 pounds. So we're getting her done. But um, just this field and then I'll park this. This will be good for the Camelina. Then for our peas, we can go ahead and seed that, roll it, and then we'll mix in some glyphosate with our pre-emergent sulfentrazone and put that in and then spray that on top. That should hopefully keep, take care of everything. They'll also throw some uh, glyphosate in there as well. So anyways, we're making progress, but tonight's supposed to get colder. It's supposed to possibly rain, even maybe lightly snow tonight. So if that happens, that'll shut us down for just a little bit. Anyways, yeah, fun, good stuff. I wish this was the brute. I keep saying that, but I'm just envisioning those 120 foot aluminum millennium booms with that weeded system. It's gonna be amazing. It was a little breezy outside, kind of miserable to put inoculant in and uh, put peas in the drill, but we got some peas in the drill and we're gonna run the five and a quarter. Big bud with the 4350 cart and the 700 toolbar, and uh, we'll see what happens. But I think I think we're pretty much ready to go. And if my dad gets going pretty good, everything's working just fine. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the grader and go work on some roads. But if everything's not working so great, well, I won't be doing that. But anyways, yeah. He's going to take the pressure off the pins and then I'll remove those safety pins for the transport position.
and then we can wing this thing out. Well, we uh, wung it out, and a couple hydraulic lines weren't hooked up correctly, so that was giving us a little bit of a trouble, but we got that figured out. And then uh, we, we went through the towers, made sure that there's nothing stuck in the towers. No mice, no debris, they're all clean. Then we ran a little bit of product through to make sure it's none of the tubes are plugged. And I think we're good to go, as you can tell. to do is we like to put it in the ground throw some seed in the ground and then we'll go out with something like a screwdriver a wrench or whatever we got on hand and then start digging around to see are they fairly consistent across the board what's the depth and if one wing is really deep then we got to figure out why and if it's all pretty consistent maybe we might have to adjust the depth a little bit deeper or shallower and we'll figure that out as we go so we don't plant a bunch of uh, acres way way too deep in the ground or too shallow because you want to try to make it you want to give the seed the best opportunity it has to produce a good crop so that's what we're trying to do that's not very deep right there you probably want a little bit deeper unless that just that one shake is off that's about three-eighths of an inch roughly it's not Yeah, I think, I think we both agree it needs to go a little deeper than that. Don't leave me! Little status update. Um, as we were messing around with the tractor, we kind of figured out that we had hydraulic issues and it was in the cart, it was in the toolbar, it was actually the tractor. And so we brought it back to the shop, didn't get this on camera because we're trying to figure out what's going on. And uh, come to find out our hydraulic pump, there's two on that tractor. One's for the steering. That one's okay, it's working just fine. And it's only for the steering, which is awesome. I don't like to have one pump do more than two things, which technically, <laughs> technically the main pump on there is running our fan and also running our uh, toolbar, lifting it up and down. Well, it's starting to crater. It's enough to run the fan, but uh, pressure wise, it's not doing so great. And the reason why I say it's starting to crater, whew, found a little lock washer, is that uh, we, max rpms checking the pressure relief checking a bunch of other stuff we can barely get it over uh 2000 psi and that should be running about 2500 psi for a gear pump and uh that's like full throttle when it's just normal operating so like 16 1700 rpm is what we usually run the tractor it should be 2500 psi yeah it's not doing so great anyways that being said He's out, he's gonna start seeding, he's getting it going, and I'm gonna take this grater and uh, put some grease on it, get it fueled, get it ready, go over and grade some roads. Oh, and by the way, for the hydraulic pump, I called 
found one. They're going to build one. It's going to be shipped here in a couple days. Hopefully it's correct. But anyways, greater time. Ah, uh, I betcha. My shutoff valve is so sticky. As you can tell, I use a rock and it is super, super, super hard to move. And I go like this. Try to wedge it. There we go. Hold it up. Uh, you gotta love these old machines. There we go. This old girl has got some history. Funny thing about the ring gear on this engine. <laughs> when we rebuilt the motor, we could not find a ring gear that would fit this uh, flywheel. And uh, so, the ring gear was all wore out. Te teeth were just ground down from the starter. I made a little jig <laughs> that I could put in the teeth to make sure I get the pitch pretty right and then I took the welder and I welded new teeth and then I ground them all down on this ring gear so still works never had a problem yet not something I wanted to do but it works come on there we go okay we need to get some fuel in this thing put a little bit of fuel in it and then uh, put grease and let's get grading, because I love grading. I don't know what it is, but I just love, love grading roads and changing the pitch and moving dirt to this side, and I love it. I don't know why, I just do it. By the way, you guys like my parking brake? You know, this thing actually does have a lever for a parking brake. I don't think I've ever tried it though. I should probably try that sometime. brake does not work. Found that out. All right, let's put some grease on this thing. Reason why we got to smear grease on this is uh, it binds up and it doesn't like metal on metal. So you got to smear a bunch of grease. It sucks because you get a bunch of dirt mixed in with that and it just keeps grinding away, but that's how you do it. And probably not in the new ones, but at least on this one, this is how you do it. And guys might disagree with me because they know better, which they're probably right, but it works, so why change it? Yeah, what a sticky job. You squeeze it out of the tube. Yeah, that's right. Somebody had Taco Bell. 